uh, ma'am the webinar has started the students have joined in uh, good morning everybody students we welcome you to this seminar and uh, please uh, be very attentive to what uh, justice gyansudha mishra says it's a very very interesting topic which is the role of law in a democracy listen carefully pay attention and ask questions which are relevant all right because uh, our aim is to see that you get the best of education in every aspect and she's a very nice person a very warm person and you will be able to relate to her i think the students are from all the three law uh, through three schools of the north cap university can you hear me students you are audible madam yeah 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 she'll be here in a while yeah good boy yes yes good morning yeah i see the names now happy to see all of you here yes good morning good morning good morning and yeah and don't don't fidget or anything like that be very attentive and listen to her in rapt attention okay because we learn a lot from uh, eminent people from people who come from such background from the judiciary from the executive from the legislature we have experience of years with them and when we listen to them we also develop we also grow along with them this is what we say that gradually when we come to a university and a university like north cap university where there is extra care taken by everybody to see that you get the best and effort is put in so we want that all of you should benefit each one of you because after the talk when i meet you whenever i'm going to ask you you know what was said by by ma'am Yeah. He said she'll be joining in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 He said that I am. I asked my colleagues to write the questions and give it to you. Type the question. So you can see. Our questions can be directed to you, na? Ah. Huh. Okay. You don't need to scroll all the way. Yeah. 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 That's. I hope you know the topic of today's seminar. All of you, role of law in a democracy, and it's a very, very relevant topic because, uh, especially, not only relevant to law students but relevant for everybody. Okay, because law plays a very important role in uh, in governance, and uh, especially in a democratic setup. okay and uh, you must have already you know especially the law students uh, you know been exposed to what are checks and balances in the constitution and how yeah ma'am is joined i think yes uh, good morning ma'am yeah good morning give morning. me a moment yes give yes ma'am sure yeah Oh, the lights have gone. Yeah, it's coming.
Are you fine, ma'am? Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah. Can't see you, ma'am. Can you? Acha, okay. Acha, acha, I have to click the button. Yeah, okay. great. Oh, great. Hello. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Love, lovely to see you. After so long. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you look just the same. <laughs> <laughs> just the same. <laughs> yeah, change is in the mind. If the mind doesn't change, the Absolutely, body refuses to change. <laughs> Very good. I agree with you fully. <laughs> Should we start, ma'am? Is it okay? More. One second, rather. Yes, yes, yes. You, you uh, make yourself comfortable. Tell me when you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Just come in the middle. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit, yes. Uh, is, the, is the light okay? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, maybe a shadow, shadow falling on the maybe bookshelf behind you, on the cupboard behind you, a little bit. Yeah. If you could come in the middle, ma'am, your frame, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I think it should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These days, you know, you have to be the actor, director, light man, cameraman, everything. I know, sir. <laughs> I know, ma'am. Ma'am, we become uh, technologically savvy now. You know, yeah. since I joined North Camp University, yeah. I've learned so much. Because <laughs> in Jamia, we were so used to manpower all around. And we used yeah. to do nothing. Yes, here, you know, <laughs> learning a lot. No, actually, <laughs> after the corona, when we have started doing it online, Yes. And then it is, uh, it's like this. Yeah. Otherwise, but it's good. we were all used to, rather, you know, accustomed to uh, physical People doing it for us. Yeah, physical yeah. Physical assistance. Very yeah. right, very right. It's good in a way. It's good in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good because you, you are spared of so much of, uh, you know, traveling, traffic. Yes. Otherwise, you know, sometimes I would travel to Gurgaon, sometimes to Noida. Of course, uh, you know, Taking the flight was another story because I'm uh, still uh, quite into uh, working, <laughs> yeah. rather executing and working the law. Yeah, I can see it, ma'am. You're a very, very busy person. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely busy. <laughs> yeah. Should we start, ma'am? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of the management the vice chancellor, the pro chancellors, the deans, and the heads of the School of Law, the School of Engineering, and the School of Management, all the faculty members, the students, and the staff of the North Cap University. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome Honorable Justice Gyan Sudha Mishra, former judge of the Supreme Court of India and former Chief Justice of the Jharkhand High Court to today's special seminar, which is part of the North Cap Masterclass Series organized by the North Cap University, Guru Gram. Justice Mishra is indeed a highly acclaimed person, both at the national and international level. Ma'am, it is really an honor and privilege to have you amongst us today. First and foremost, I would like to introduce Justice Mishra to all of you. Justice Mishra received her legal education in Patna and enrolled as an advocate with the Bihar State Bar Council in the year 1972, at a time when it was very uncommon for women to join the legal profession. Justice Mishra worked very hard as a lawyer and engaged herself in several activities associated with the Bar Association. In Delhi, she practiced in the Supreme Court 
and also was elected as a treasurer, joint secretary, and member of the executive committee of the Supreme Court Bar Association several times. In recognition of his services and standing as a lawyer for more than 21 years, Justice Mishra was appointed as a judge of the Patna High Court in the year 1994. Soon thereafter, she was transferred to the Rajasthan High Court due to a transfer policy prevalent at that time. As the judge of the Rajasthan High Court, she decided many important matters relating to company law, arbitration law, and constitutional law. During her tenure as a judge with the Rajasthan High Court, she was also appointed as the chairman of the advisory board constituted under the National Security Act. In addition, she was also appointed as the executive chairman of the Rajasthan Legal Services Authority. Here, she played a very active role and saw that legal aid and legal assistance was given to the vulnerable sections of the society. Justice Mishra has indeed been a very sensitive and a very humane judge. She's dealt with uh, matters like stopping the incidence of child marriage, female feticide, and preventing other atrocities on women and children. After having completed 14 years as a judge of the Rajasthan High Court, Justice Mishra was elevated as the Chief Justice of the Charkand High Court in the year 2008 and on 13th of July. She continued to be so till 29th April 2010. And on 30th April 2010, she was, she was appointed as a judge of the Supreme Court of India. She was a very, very dynamic judge in the Supreme Court of India. She passed several landmark and noteworthy judgments. Some of them I'll mention over here. One was the Srinivasan BCCI judgment. The other was the Aruna Schoenberg matter where the concept of euthanasia was discussed in detail and a distinction was drawn between passive and active euthanasia. She also listened to the Uphar fire tragedy case and a dissenting opinion is appreciated even today. She felt that the management was liable for the huge loss of lives and whatever you know, repercussions it had brought. And she directed that they should be paid a huge sum so that a trauma center could be created. She is a firm believer in social justice. Apart from being a very powerful judge in the Supreme Court of India, she's participated extensively in international conferences on women and children relating to matters uh, like violence, etc. Ma'am, thank you so much for being with us here today, despite your busy schedule. In a short while, Justice Mishra would be speaking on the topic, role of law in a democracy. The topic of today's lecture is very vibrant and much can be said and discussed under it. Democracy focuses on how societies select those who hold power, while the role of law is concerned with how political power is exercised. The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle had said once, law should govern. Thus, governing through law is a critical factor for the advancement of democracy, rooted in equal rights and accountability. Having done political science at the master's level, coupled with her expertise in law, Justice Mishra, I'm sure, would add a lot of vigor and vitality to her talk on the role of law in a democracy. Ma'am, I request you to deliver your lecture now. Thank you so much. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah. Hello, everyone. First of all, at the outset, I acknowledge that I'm truly delighted to be a part of this event where I would be interact interacting, although not physically, but visually and uh, through the uh, audio system with the, with the upcoming uh, legal fraternity, rather I would say future legal fraternity coming out from 
a place like gurugram which is i would say it's a, a it's a rose in the ncr region which motivated the uh, uh, the citizenry at large how we can explore and expand setting up of this north cap university with i guess i can if i can use this expression collaboration of arizona state university i am quite sure the students would be exposed and introduced to the world at large and being you know based in gurugram they can we have the experience and the uh, the uh, teach uh, the learning skills which is you know uh, which they could have had by traveling abroad and getting it having said that i am also uh, really thankful to uh, professor batra who with her persuasive affectionate skills could you know uh, change uh, the date uh, for my accommodation in this lecture program and i am really thankful for her for doing so many changes about the time and the, about the date and also the management for this that reflects that if they want to do it they are they are also flexible and i'm why i'm saying this there's a uh, uh, it has a link with the legal mind also and i will want to share it that uh, you know if your mind is flexible and accommodates to the situation you can Uh, 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 you can accommodate in life as well, and uh, 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 and get the result without compromising with what you want to do. You know, having a guest or not having a guest is a very small little issue, but you know, it, a mindset because uh, that is how you know that uh, uh, balance the uh, the scale of justice, which is the symbol of justice. that is there where the judges have to keep weighing as to how to deliver justice and how to not be egoistical about their views and accept if accept or change their mind and be firm also even till the last minute because all of you are budding lawyers uh, i would because you are into law uh, law study so i am saying this because you might remember some day that someone has said like this so uh, uh, i also like to compliment for suggesting uh, so many you know subjects for my choice to address you and i thought uh, since i have a background of political science and law i think this is and uh, the Uh, and uh, the relevance of this uh, topic and the subject that has been chosen today uh, that is role of law and democracy the connection between democracy and the and the subject of law is is so interconnected and so integral to each other that in simplest of terms if if i have to say the democracy is a form of government which is a principle as to how a country would be governed as you are all aware the most ancient form of <coughs> governance in most of the countries initially had been kingship even from the ages when we say ram rajya and uh, treta you <coughs> dwapar you get etc they are <coughs> the governments uh, 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 is was generally with the kingship it is only when the, uh, uh, the there was evolution in society and the awareness came into the minds <coughs> of
awareness came into the mind that uh, uh, through our education and through our experience around <coughs> all men, all citizens, all men and and women are equal in the eye of law, and therefore there is no reason why the citizens at large should be the subjects for all time to come, subjects in the sense that a king is ruling, queen is ruling, and <coughs> the others are just obeying them. So awareness seeped into the minds of the, <coughs> the, uh, of the citizens at large and our leaders uh, who, uh, who, had the, uh, who had the vision that we must adopt democracy as a form of government. <coughs> and as you are aware, I would not go deep into detail about democracy, what exactly is the democracy, but <coughs> in, an, in a... Can you have some form, water? I have to call water. my staff somewhere here. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't matter, I'll, I'll try to manage. So, uh, this, you know, democracy, <clears throat> as you are all aware, that it's the, uh, the uh, most, uh, most uh, popular definition or the adage, I would say, by, the, uh, by, uh, by Abraham Lincoln, democracy is by the people, of the people, and for the people. Maybe three are, I'm jumbling up, whatever, but all the three de democracies by the people, for the people and of the people, which means if you are adopting a democratic form of government, the people's will are, uh, 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 people's will over the system ought to prevail. And that is how the uh, so many countries adopted democratic form of government and India, after attaining freedom, <coughs> our constitution framers also adopted the system of government where we have not used the word uh, 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 the uh, democracy, but the in the constitution, when the preamble says, we the people of India, that democratic spirit is engulfed and encapsulated into the governance, form of governance. Now, democracy, as I, as I would say, this non-democracy is a, is, is a principle, is a theoretical aspect of governance, that this is the way that we want to govern. Now, why do I say there is a, a deep connection in between the democracy and law? Because after all, when you adopt a theory, and when you have to put it into practice, you have to adopt a procedure. How to, how to ensure that the people's will prevails in a governance and how the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the um, uh, country at large would be, uh, would be able to manage the democratic process. And in that sense, straight away, we have to jump into the arena of law. Law, first of all, is emanates from constitution. The constitution gives you a structure. What are your rights? What are your also your duties? The other day, you know, I had to speak on, you know, duties was not so prevalent at that time. I'll come to that later. So, uh, the fun, uh, the uh, the uh, rights duties basically was ingrained into the constitution a chapter and uh, 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 after this constitutional framework there were other laws and the first and most important law to execute i would use the expression execute an implementation of the democratic norms, the Representation of People Act was enacted. And plethora of acts and regulations came into existence. And that was 
to give effect to the democratic process. So first of all is the constitution, which gives you an entire framework as to what are your rights. There shall be no discrimination on the basis of caste, sex, religion. There will, you will have the right, you will have the freedom of speech, you are the fundamental rights uh, that you the uh, freedom of speech and expression, fr freedom to form assembly, freedom uh, uh, of uh, you know uh, right to property of course is now is not uh, it's not there. So uh, if you go through the chapter on fundamental rights, you could I'm not you know. Uh, uh, reading it out to you, I'm just giving you the outline that these were the rights that were given out uh, 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 that was to be that was to be given uh, to the citizens. Then, of course, later on in the in 1976 amendment, the fundamental duties first of all were uh, were uh, were added to the constitution, where the duties of the citizens also have been given out that. What are the duties that they are required to discharge? Because generally we are obsessed with our rights, but don't forget that if there is a fundamental right to uh, to if there is a fundamental right uh, to you, it is also the fundamental duty to discharge your obligation towards the state. Of course, I have always been emphasizing that duties. Uh, the other day, you know. Uh, uh, in a web series, you know, this question came up. So uh, uh, the fundamental duties, I have always been emphasizing that the, uh, the citizens have the fundamental duties, but there's there is a duty also for the state and the country at large to ensure that there is no abuse of the process of the authority that is vested. And that is, you know, as a judge, I have always, you know, uh, I have felt that, you know, we tell people to, to, to follow the law, to, uh, to abide by the legal process, but it is also enjoined upon the authority and the, uh, whosoever is exercising authority to ensure that uh, you don't have, you don't abuse the process. And in terms of the university also, I like educational institution also, I said that when you preach the student, because that was in the context where uh, some of the students were denied a seat in, that is, that was before CLAT. So uh, they were denied seat in spite of higher marks and all. So uh, I had to, you know, ex give them a peace of mind that you teach the students to uh, not to use unfair means. But if you start with the use of uh, unfair admissions, I don't think uh, that your preaching uh, 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 would have much effect. Professor, please tell me, you know, please tell me if I uh, cross the time limit. Let me know we, when do, at what time I have to stop. Yeah, because... sure, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, uh, ma'am, we make you speak a little more and then we can ask question and answers. Okay. okay. Yeah, because so, the students are looking because, forward, you know, they all want to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I'll try to, to move fast on the subject. Yes, so, yes. Uh, 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 so the constitutional framework and the representation of people and all the laws that came into existence, those are the norms and the precepts which has to be executed, the, how the democratic forms, uh, norms are to be executed. That is, a, that is, itself an indication how deep is the connection in between the law and the and and uh, 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 in between the law and the democratic norms so first of all representation of people act where the people's will will prevail in 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 choosing the representative and that is how so much of focus is there on free and fair election if there is free and fair election, every individual will have, will, will ensure that his or her will has taken a shape in the form of democratic process. But of course, these democracy, democratic execution of democratic norms are through our representative. Of course, 
uh, all of us don't sit in the parliament, but our representative are there to take care. All of us don't sit in the legislature, but the member of legislative assembly and the council, they take care. So this is how the will of the people gets into the democratic process. And the next step is how do that democratic process get connected with the law? Because it is the law courts, it's the, uh, it's the uh, uh, not merely the law courts, like, you know, if the chief election commissioner is there, first of all, to ensure that free and fair election should take place. And of course, the responsibility lies on the authorities also to ensure that law is executed in the purest of form. And when that purity, when that purity is, uh, gets, you know, uh, uh, if it is, you know, any aberration is entered, any, uh, any in the execution part of the, uh, 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 if it is not done in a proper way, then of course the law courts are there and you get a remedy in the law court. If there is a discrimination, you can go to the law, law court. If you, if you are, you know, uh, 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 like you're denied your rights, your constitutional rights, your legal rights, uh, constitutional rights as given out in the constitution, various acts, because of the time limit, I can't go deep into detail. And, you know, you have a broad idea of what, what exactly is the connection, because uh, uh, don't think that democratic process, democracy is just a compartment and just, a, 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 just an abstract idea. Yes, it is an abstract to some extent in the sense that we have adopted a mode of government focusing that there shall be no discrimination. Each individual will have a right in the governance of the country. And that is executed through legal precepts, legal acts, the uh, various acts, and, and also the uh, procedural aspects that if there are any aberration and if there are uh, uh, not uh, 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 like execution is uh, gets polluted in some way, then you get a remedy in a court of law. So the connection in between the law and democratic process is an ongoing experience because there was a time when you know uh, 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 when, uh, when land reforms came to came into existence land reforms the large chunk of land were lying with the zamindars then came the zamindari abolition that also was a, why it came because uh, land was considered to be a property to which you know uh, which could not be concentrated uh, in, in the hands of some individuals like zamindars and everybody had a right in some way or the other. So reformatory measures also are coming through the law. So uh, it's a, you know, it's a, uh, 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 this, this subject of, you know, connection between law and the democracy, it's a, uh, uh, it's a very important subject of great relevance and value you uh, the great relevance and value uh, and that that's why i think it's a, uh, a very uh, a very beautiful subject that you have chosen professor batra and uh, given me the choice to uh, to speak on this subject and uh, one can if you one can explore this topic i think uh, we'll have many more sessions to do that but I have given you just an outline idea of what exactly is required to understand when we discuss democracy and law. In nutshell, if I have to give, a, give it in a capsule form, I would say democracy is your right and law is your right to see that democracy is executed in letter and spirit. Yes, execution is not a word which is would be used in this sense. Execution is that when you go, go to get a court decree, then you go to the court and get your rights executed. But execution, but when you understand this, so you have to feel confident 
that yes we are living in and you will be the you will be the judges uh, judge of the judges that whether these democratic norms are being followed truly or not and if not then you have to stand up stand up with uh, 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 to even to protest but with a duty and obligation that you cannot cross the line you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, and i have always said you know uh, and may, on many forums i've said a judge is not merely the one who has been designated as a judge there is a judge one the, there is a judge in each one's conscience and that judge will tell you what is right and wrong so when you when you have the democratic rights <clears throat> you have also the obligation to ensure that you have to uh, you have to see that you give opportunity to the uh, to the uh, to the masters masters in the sense that they are uh, taking care of your rights and side by side the masters also have an obligation to ensure that the process of governance is not abused i would not because i can see professor batra you know i i'm i'm conscious maybe you're looking at the clock or what i don't know but i quite respect your uh, uh, the time limit and especially in a zoom meeting etc no, no, so, there is <laughs> there's enough time i was just writing down the points okay points, okay yeah. okay good, yeah, good, yeah, good. yeah good. yes 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 Yes. so so if i can uh, explore it further explore it further so uh, uh, if it if you go technically <clears throat> no one would say that indian penal code crpc cpc they are uh, what is what has it got to do with democracy Be- it has got to do with democracy because democracy gives you the right of uh, of dignity to live a life of dignity and uh, <clears throat> and respect and therefore if you do not get the rights which is laid down in the constitution then it's not that you are remediless you have a remedy through the constitution but these days there's a there's lot of you know uh, discussion on the democratic uh, on the on the fundamental duties also so we are also have to focus that fundamental duties fundamental duties also are equally important which is not getting highlighted so much and fundamental duties that you have to draw a line between your rights like your right might get clashed with the uh, uh, with your duty also but then that judge which is there in you will tell you where to stop where to draw the line so you know the uh, the correlation between uh, democratic process and the role of law you would not take long or it's not a rocket science to understand that what is the connection between the two but since uh, the uh, mostly uh, i think uh, the avid listeners are the students the uh, young mind so they must gla- they must get the clarity of the idea of between the two because many many students who have opted for political science or they must have studied in their civic subject also even in school they get but there is a murky idea so as and when you grow and as and as and when you mature you have to have, get the clarity of thought you have to be confident of what you you understand because if you understand and that will be you know valuable in in uh, in all walk of life that if you understand the subject and with clarity that will enable you to take an informed decision in whatever you do so uh, it's a, a democracy in another another way of expressing is that you can understand that democracy is a uh, is a, a uh, the dictionary definition of a democracy uh, i'm reading it out the democracy is a government by the people in which the supreme power is vested in the people and exercised directly by them 
or by their elected agents under a free electoral system. But I have a method of expressing myself. I have always uh, followed that these theoretical uh, uh, precepts and the theoretical uh, lecture that we give, uh, many a times I have a feeling that perhaps it is not seeping it, uh, into the minds of the listeners. The listeners should be able to comprehend what the speaker is saying. So instead of going to the theoretical part, let that theory be explained in simple words so that you can register what the speaker is saying. So I switched over to the, to the theoretical aspect. I said, I'll read it at the last for the benefit. And all these are not, uh, this is what I have said, uh, but when you coin it, when you have to write an answer and make it uh, very presentable, like, you know, ideas may be there, but presentation also has to be there. So if you have to present, then of course, many a times you have to indulge in theory also. So let it be a mix of both. A democratic government implies a democratic state, but a democratic state does not necessarily mean a democratic government. A democratic state means is that a community as a whole possesses sovereign authority and maintains ultimate controlling, even to the extent of dismissing a government. In addition to being a form of government and a type of state, democracy is an order of society. A democratic is one in which the spirit of equality and fraternity prevails. Such a society does not necessarily imply a democratic state or a democratic government. And uh, I pause here for a minute. I am reading this from, uh, from a scholarly uh, article that I read uh, for your, uh, let me, you have to brush up your uh, uh, knowledge also at times. So I compliment this author because there were very many articles on the internet, uh, which, which I, you know, cursorily went through it. But I found that this was the most, uh, 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 it, it was, a, it, it had a lot of clarity. As I said, I always focus on clarity and uh, I would uh, compliment uh, the author of this article. I don't know if I can, uh, some, uh, some scholar, Pankaj or something. Uh, uh, I, can't, I can't, you know, uh, scroll and get the name right now. So uh, uh, these were the very beautifully coined uh, words regarding democracy. But we we are we b believe the you know the execution theory. The theory is there, but you have to make the audience understand what is there. So the democratic process, you would get so many you know <clears throat> the the theory but you have to understand what is the connection in between the two. So having said that, I think I would, you know, uh, 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 now conclude because I'm also looking forward to interacting with the students. I said in the beginning that the more, the beautiful part of uh, these lectures, uh, which I'm now missing during these, uh, coro uh, these, because most of the time, I wouldn't say most, it's invariably now the, uh, uh, through video uh, uh, online uh, conferences and the online lecture series and that note uh, the the deep connection touch in between the uh, audience and the speaker i am missing this a lot i'm looking forward to come to your physically to come to your university and uh, then meet each one of you because uh, the online cannot be a substitute of course it's a very good substitute uh, on this, uh, during this, you know, com compelling circumstances. But, you know, it can not take the place of a physical hearing and a physical, this thing. So, uh, but something can be compensated by interacting with the question and answer. So I look forward to meeting the students. So many thanks for inviting me, many thanks for including me. And uh, uh, the topic is uh, although, uh, relatively, I would say it's quite a simple topic, yet 
but uh, I always follow simplicity. <laughs> That's in my psyche. So simple topic, but but great relevance and value, which adds, which is not theoretical at all, which needs to be understood by each one of us. We're looking forward to many more occasions. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Really grateful to you. I think you put the lecture on uh, law and democracy in a democracy in a very simple manner for the students to understand. And you took up many issues, you know, talking about the preamble that democracy is in, in the preamble itself. The spirit of democracy is in the preamble. You also talked about fair elections. You also talked about duties. You've talked about fundamental rights. You also told everybody what happens when there is discrimination, they can go to the courts. At the same time, you've also talked about the obligation which is there on the state to see that democratic principles are implemented. I think uh, you've summarized it very well, ma'am. And uh, I'll open the house for a question answer session now. Uh, students, you may please ask questions. But you, okay. There are some questions which I've got, ma'am. Uh, am I audible to you, clear to you? Yes. Yeah, the first question is, it is by Vishaka Singh Deshwan. Uh, she's asked, should there be an independent institution for the appointment and transfer of judges of the higher judiciary to ensure higher transparency? How do we ensure the constitutionality of such an institution? This is from a faculty member, uh, ma'am. Vishaka is a faculty. Actually, you know, uh, as you all uh, you, uh, you are aware, there's, there's already a collegian system for appointment of judges. And that was, you know, that was carved out by, uh, through a judgment, you must be aware. So initially what the constitution makers had given to us was a consultation in between the, uh, 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 with, the with the executive and the uh, and the chief justice of india of course for a state in the state it is governor of state and uh, uh, for the supreme court it's not president president ultimately gives the warrant of appointment so you know it is the experience which has taught us that we have to be very very careful about appointing the judges in the sense that if you uh, because I will tell you the past experience. The past experience was there was not even a collegium. There was the, as I said, uh, the consultation between the governor, chief justice, uh, and the chief minister. So all three of them. Then the experience showed that at the state level, there were the, uh, uh, in the old time after the nine, after 1950, there was very little interference of the chief minister. Whatever the chief justice uh, uh, recommended was, uh, they were, you know, uh, uh, they were acceptable and the consultation process was almost like a, just, a, I won't say formality, but they were just a, uh, uh, taking each organ of the state into confidence. But gradually, 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 uh, all uh, the legal fraternity, of course, because we have been there in the system. We started suffering aberrations in that system also, <clears throat> in the sense there was a lot of, uh, there were very many interferences from one organ. I cannot, uh, I cannot really be very candid about it. Uh, what we say in Hindi, thoda kaha jada samajye. So uh, <clears throat> there was <clears throat> a kind of uh, distrust about the choices and there was a lot of, you know, uh, like putting the foot down that one has to do this, that. That is how, you know, uh, um, uh, that is how, you know, these uh, 11 judges judgment came in with the Advocate and the Court Association where a collegium system was formed. Now, the question, the, coming to the main part of the question, the question is that should there be, uh, should there be an, uh, some uh, new form of 
method of selection. So the main part is that who who should get the authority to choose the judges? Should where should it lie? Uh, uh, bluntly put, you know who is going to bell the cat. So if you if it is uh, so uh, if it is left a uh, uh, if you could also uh, her question if you could say what is the question where where she wants whether she wants the power to be vested in the executive in the legislature or the judiciary what is the composition that she would want well, to yeah, suggest wants, then I could yeah. have answered it better. So uh, you uh, she have wants to, to know. Ma'am, she wants to know that should we have an independent institution outside the courts for appointment and transfer of judges of the higher judiciary so that transparency is ensured? And is it possible under the Constitution of India, you know, to have such an institution? Is it possible, possible to have... Possibility is always there by way of an, um, uh, the, the amendment came into that national judicial accountability bill. Yes, yes. But I would, I would suggest that you better have a separate session for this, because uh, you know, uh, many a, times you know uh, the subject is this, and there are uh, 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 sky is the limit kind of a you know question and answer session. So you yes. must, you must. I would, I would request that you must focus your questions mainly related to the subject, because in yes. one of the sessions I had to reprimand, reprimand the anchor. Because yeah. he he went to the extent of uh, he uh, he uh, you know organized a webinar uh, online webinar and then some judgment had come about contempt of court and yeah. uh, he he started asking me questions on uh, so merely because a, a, a former judge is there uh, I am also now a part of you only. I would also discuss with you what should be the improvement. So it's better, you know, the, uh, but if you want to form an opinion, you must come out your question with candid ideas, you know. Uh, right. It's very, uh, uh, it's very easy to say that should there be an independent institution. First of all, you have to identify who are those who are going to be the members of that institution. So national, right. uh, uh, national uh, uh, that uh, uh, judicial uh, uh, this uh, which was struck down, uh, their uh, a composition was there. So first of all, uh, but yes, their their uh, discussion should be there. You know, uh, uh, we must always yes. uh, strive. Okay, so, we, yeah, ma'am, we can yes, have another. I would not another, still, I would never, uh, because it's a very difficult question to answer. So. Tomorrow, if I say it should be the, it, I, I might be quoted that a uh, former judge is like this. So, and it's a very, very delicate subject too. So, but it should, uh, if the audience is, uh, the, the professor is uh, very frank, she should tell who should be the, uh, all right, I would welcome that idea. Uh, speaking for myself, of course, I can't speak uh, for the entire fraternity. Speaking for myself, I would welcome the idea. But first of all, you have to see, who should be, what should be the composition? That is the most tricky question. Like Absolutely. what would be the constitution? What would be the, the composition of that institution? Institution, right. Huh. Absolutely, ma'am. You're absolutely right. And we need uh, another session for this debate. I, yeah. I agree with you because I had supervised a PhD on this topic and oh. uh, it took about five, six years, you know, finally yeah. for the submission of that PhD. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ma'am, a student wants to know that why is it that India doesn't have, you know, stricter laws like in other countries? I don't know why he's asked this question, because I think what he means is proper implementation. You know, that is what is lacking. I think our laws are very good. Otherwise, it's just no, I, didn't, has... I didn't, I didn't quite, quite uh, get yeah. a feel of the because question. A student is wanting to know why can't a country have stricter laws? For better uh, management of the country, law and order situation. Oh, I think uh, I, I think uh, uh, I think I, I can get uh, now. I get the uh, knack of the question. Uh, perhaps uh, 
uh, uh, would he welcome the uh, because we are in a we are in a democracy we mm-hmm. are not yes. in a authoritarian rule and authoritarian rule if the uh, 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 the entire constitution cannot you know uh, there was a time when there was a lot of debate about the presidential and the parliamentary form of government in the in america we have presidential form of government so here if you have parliamentary form of government and you are selecting so uh, uh, stricter laws means uh, uh, the laws are already there but uh, stricter laws uh, cannot go to the extent of uh, being strict without without a fair trial the fair trial is the ethics of democracy i did not uh, say much on that but free and fair trial also is there but when you question you see i would uh, i would like to express that when we when we when we think about those uh, changes we must put ourselves like just one individual should put that himself or herself in the situation that if this happens to me what is the treatment that i would want for myself then you can decide it better because if you adopt an authoritarian tomorrow today a is there tomorrow b is there thereafter c is there so uh, if he is wanting that you know uh, stricter means the question i would appreciate you know it should not be vague you must be a little there should be clarity in answer and there should be clarity on the questions also authoritarian means that if you if you are trying to hint that there should be no uh, there should be no feel free and try to tell if something has happened then put him behind the bars we are also having some acts like national security act also was like that yeah. and uh, there are so many other acts but they all you know experience shows it that we cannot go to the extent and once we are adopting a democratic process of government we cannot uh, you know compromise with the values of the basic uh, structure that we have adopted to to one more question ma'am you must be tired you know the student wants to know in a democratic setup you know he wants to also question the reservation policy he said can't we do away with the reservation policy ma'am this is also a subject where a lot of time is required you could just give us uh, you know your opinion in short you yeah. see actually you know uh, all the questions all the three questions that have been put to me i think it's a parliamentarians who should be put all these questions yes. i i would just be uh, one among you to express my view but if you really want to keep a, make an impact then it's the parliament and there are two view points of course the uh, the uh, the essential vision was that uh, the uh, uh, the um, uh, the reservation policy should end after a particular period of time and in spite of that if it is getting extended maybe the experience uh, shows that uh, we have still not reached the stage but to be very frank about it it's basically the vote bank Uh, which you know uh, uh, which prevails upon uh, the law makers but uh, it would be unfair also to say that uh, uh, that that those decisions are taken because why is it getting a support there somewhere the substance is there so reservation you know you uh, uh, you have to you cannot uh, but yeah there's you see much can be said both ways and that is how you know it is midway but yes. i would suggest please don't this uh, put these questions to judges you must put these questions to the parliamentarian invite a parliamentarian uh, dr batra and <laughs> and ask them to answer these questions but your yes. difficulty would be those those answers will go on the party lines Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, and I agree with you that it has to be reviewed. The policy needs to be reviewed because uh, Ambedkar had said that you know it should be reviewed after every ten years when the members of the Constituent Assembly were deliberating on the various articles. 
Yeah, yeah. and of course, ma'am, you must have done it in political science. Uh, there are <laughs> yes. Actually, I went into execution. No democracy. I did in as a political science student. Yes. But execution, I, I was more into execution because I came into law. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But but you have an excellent combination. Excellent combination. <laughs> yeah, yes. my, but I would share some of my personal, uh, you know, uh, um, my father was very disappointed in, in spite of such good percentage. Why have you not gone into economics than law? Yes. <laughs> but uh, I had already decided to, I said, no, I want to because it is very much akin to law and I'm already knowing all the how the constitution was made, how who fought for these constitutions. So I was a bit uh, adamant in my choice of subject, which always came. If he had been here in person, he's no more. But uh, he would have said, Humne isko bola tha, tum economics mein jao. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Fathers are all the same. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Anyway, man, but I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm feeling uh, the because I don't get to see the students at all or the the the, yes. the faces who are putting the questions. Yes, ma'am. I, I know. But there is a mode I will let you know later where you can see the uh, at least the person who is putting the question. In future, we will see that they are here. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all, yes, because you know it becomes always, better. Yes. Yeah, there's always a next time with better output. Yes, ma'am. And uh, we are looking forward to your coming here physically as soon as things get better and we all get the confidence that yes, yeah. the pandemic is over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ma thank you very much for a very insightful, a very enlightening uh, lecture on the role of law in a democracy. There are many takeaways that I've written down and there is more clarity. But of course, because of constraint of time, I'm not putting all the questions before you. But when you come in person, then of course you can meet the students and also you know, have an interaction with them. Yeah, but it, uh, I tell you, it came as a surprise to me that uh, I'm, I'm the only speaker uh, in this event. So oh. I wish, but uh, hearing the questions, I was you know, just... Uh, uh, thinking that maybe I had a parliamentarian along with me, I, were, I passed on the questions to, to them. That now is first of all you answer, then I will buy, I will give my judgment on that. <laughs> Ma'am, actually, this is a master class series, specially organized by the North Cap University, you know, also. for the induction program, also an ongoing series. So, we are getting all very eminent people to deliver lecture every day for the benefit of the students and the faculty. Yeah, so, you are doing it with so much of devotion and commitment. I can I can feel that. I can see that. Yeah, so because My, it's always a pleasure to listen to people like you, ma'am. And we will be connected. And thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us. I know it is very difficult for you. You are a very, very busy person. You know, whenever I tried calling you up, I had to wait for uh, many hours before I got some response. <laughs> and I no, actually, it's a, I, I, actually, it's a, just a coincidence. Many times it's a coincidence also. Yes, but yes, yes, during the daytime and I'm fully occupied. But <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. But it's been a pleasure having you with us. And on behalf yeah, of same, yeah. the management, all the officials of the North Cap University, all the deans and the heads and the faculty members, the students and the staff. I really thank you from my heart for being here with us. And we hope to call you again sometime in the near future. Thank you so thank much, ma'am. Thank, thank you and wish you all the best. Wish you all a great future in whatever you do, in whatever you are devoted. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So I'm now logging out. Yeah, have a good day. Have a good yeah. day. Yeah, see.